taken two weeks off from the news due to homecoming and not having school last Friday. We are so happy to be back. However, we will not have any news next week due to only having a three-day week. Today's lunch is chicken tenders, a roll, or a peanut butter and jelly sandwich with string cheese. It comes with a side of mashed taters and gravy, green beans, assorted fruit, and assorted veggies. Over the last two weeks, we have had a lot of activities. The high school volleyball team went 6-3 and three and got second in the league tournament. The junior high volleyball team finished their season and got fourth in the league tournament. The junior high football team also finished their season with a 2-5 and five record. The high school football team defeated Valley Falls and Maranatha. Tonight, high school football plays Donovan West at home. It is pink out and senior night. Tomorrow is high school volleyball substate. The games will be played at Marmoton Valley High School. The Lady Cats' first game will be around 2 o'clock. Then they will also play a few more games after that. Come cheer your ladies on to state. Congratulations to Brooke Lewis and Trevor Queenie on being crowned homecoming king and queen. Also, congratulations to the seniors on sweeping homecoming by winning the float and dress up days. <laughs> Here's a short clip of Homecoming Week. And now to McCray for the weather. Today's high is 69 with a low of 50. Throughout the weekend there will be scattered storms. Next week it will be sunny. Back to you, Kenna. Thanks, McCray. A Kansas angler pulled an alligator gar in the Neosha River. This has never been documented in Kansas before. The alligator gar was 4.5 foot long and 39.5 pounds. The Kansas Department of Wildlife and Parks says they are trying to find out how it got there, but they believe it was released from an aquarium. A dog in Minnesota was paralyzed. A teen felt bad and thought it should have the chance to walk. So this teen built custom, handmade wheelchairs for this special dog and any other disabled animal. She has put together at least a dozen front support, back support, or full support models, or whatever the cat or dog is in need of. We have to take a short break and we will be right back. Better get your costumes ready because Halloween is coming soon. Now to get y'all ready for that spooky season, we'll tell you some spooky stories. the old blue sedan was a senior at high school. She lived on a farm about eight miles away and used the car to drive back and forth. She had driven into town at night to see a basketball game. Now she was on her way home. As she pulled away from the school, she noticed a red pickup truck follow her out of the parking lot. A few minutes later, the truck was still behind her. I guess we're going to... <laughs> <I guess. laughs> I guess we're going in the same direction, she thought. She began to watch the truck in her mirror. When also, when she changed her speed, the driver of the truck changed his speed. When she passed a car, so did he. Then he turned on his high beams, flooding her car with light. He left them on for almost a minute. He probably wants to pass me, she thought, but she was becoming uneasy. Usually she drove home over a back road. Not too many people went that way. 
But when she turned onto the, the road, so did the truck. I've got to get away from him, she thought, and she began to drive faster. Then he turned his high beams on again. After a minute, he turned them off. Then he turned them on again <laughs> and off again. <laughs> she drove even faster, but the truck driver <laughs> Okay. Where was I at? She drove even faster, but the truck driver stayed right behind her. Then he turned his high beams on again. Once more, her car was ablaze with light. What is he doing, she wondered. What does he want? <laughs> then, he, then he turned them off again. But a, <laughs> but a minute later, he had them on again and left them on. At last, she pulled into her driveway, and the truck pulled in right behind her. She jumped from the car. <laughs> she jumped from the car and ran to the house. Call the police, she screamed at her father. Out in the driveway, she could see the driver of the truck. He had a gun in his hand. When the police arrived, they started to arrest him, but he pointed to the girl's car. You don't want me, he said. You want him! Crouched behind the driver's seat, there was a man with a knife. As the driver of the truck explained it, the man slipped into the girl's car just before she left the school. He saw it happen, but there was no way he could stop it. He thought about getting the police, but he was afraid to leave her, so he followed her car. Each time the man in the back seat reached up to overpower her, the driver of the truck turned on his high beams. Then the man dropped down, afraid that someone might see him. It was 9 o'clock in the evening. Everybody was sitting on the couch in front of the TV. There was Richard, Brian, Janine, and Doreen, the babysitter. The telephone rang. Maybe it's your mother, said Doreen. She picked up the phone before she could say a word, and a man laughed hysterically and hung it up. Who was it, asked Richard. Some nut, said Doreen. What did I miss? At 9.30, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it, and it was the same man who had called before. I'll be there soon, he said, and he laughed and hung up. Who was it? The children asked. Some crazy person, she said. About 10 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Jenny got, got to it first. Hello, she said. It was the same man. One more hour, he said, and he laughed and hung up. He said, one more hour? What did he mean, asked Jenny. Don't worry, said Doreen. It's somebody fooling around. I'm scared, said Jenny. About 10.30, the telephone rang once more. When Doreen picked it up, the man said, pretty soon now, and he laughed. Why are you doing this, Doreen screamed, and he hung up. Was it the guy again, asked Brian? Yes, said Doreen. I'm going to call the operator and complain. The operator told her to call back if it happened again, and she would try to trace the call. At 11 o'clock, the telephone rang again. Doreen answered it. Very soon now, the man said, and he laughed and hung up. Doreen called the operator almost at once. She called back. The person is calling from the telephone upstairs, she said. You better leave, I'll get the police. Just then, a door upstairs opened. A man they had never seen before started down the stairs toward them as they ran from the house. He was smiling in a very strange way. A few minutes later, the police found him and arrested him. Now for the toe. A boy was digging at the edge of the garden when he saw a big toe. He tried to pick it up, but it was stuck to something. So he gave it a good hard pull and it came off in his hand. Then he heard something groan and scamper away. The boy took the toe into the kitchen and showed it to his mother. It looks nice and plump, she said. I'll put it in the soup and we'll have it for supper. That night, his father carved the toe into three pieces and they each had a piece. Then they did the dishes and when it got dark, they went to bed. The boy fell asleep almost at once, but in the middle of the night, a sound awakened him. It was something out in the street. It was a voice, and it was calling to him. Where is my toe? It groaned. When the boy heard that, he got very scared, but he thought, it doesn't know where I am. It never will find me. Then he heard the voice once more, only now it was closer. Where is my toe? It groaned. The boy pulled the blankets over his head and closed his eyes. I'll go to sleep, he thought. When I wake up, it will be gone. But soon he heard the back door open, and again he heard the voice. Where is my toe? It groaned. Then the boy heard footsteps move through the kitchen, into the dining hall, into the living room, into the front hall. Then slowly they climbed the stairs. Closer and closer they came. 
Soon they were in the upstairs hall. Now they were outside his door. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. His door opened. Shaking with fear, he listened as the footsteps slowly moved through the dark toward his bed. Then they stopped. Where is my toe? The voice groaned. And as always, we must end with a joke. Why was the jack-o'-lantern always afraid? Why? It had no guts. <laughs>